the Roman roads. Any fool can make a dirt track. Barbarians do it all the time. Those paths turn into mud pits in the winter and dust clouds in the summer. Our roads are different. They are weapons. The Via Appia, the Via Flaminia. These are arteries for moving legions, not trails for farm carts. The secret isn't the surface, it's the layers. We dig down. We lay a foundation of large stones, then gravel, then packed sand, and finally, the dressed stone slabs. They are crowned, higher in the middle, so rainwater runs off into the drainage ditches on the side. The result? A legion can march 30 miles in a day, rain or shine, while the enemy is still bogged down in the mud. And they are straight. We don't go around hills. We cut through them. We don't go around swamps. We build causeways over them. They are the clearest demonstration of power. The landscape bends to Rome's will, not the other way around. The aqueducts. If the roads are our arteries, the aqueducts are our veins. They bring the water, the lifeblood of a city. Civilians marvel at the great arches, at the Pont du Gard. They think it's architecture. That's foolishness. The arches are only used when we need to cross a valley. Most of an aqueduct is a boring concrete channel, hidden underground or run atop a low wall. The real marvel is the calculation. The engineering isn't in the height, it's in the slope. Our engineers, the liberatores, could calculate a gradient of just a few inches per kilometer. Enough for the water to flow constantly by gravity, but not fast enough to erode the channel. They did this for 50 miles, through mountains where we had to dig tunnels, and across valleys. Also, the citizen in Rome, or the legionary at an outpost, could have clean water to drink, instead of drinking from the same filthy river where the sewage was dumped. Clean water means less disease. Less disease means stronger legions. It's simple. The aqueducts aren't about luxury. They are about health and power. The Colosseum, the Flavian Amphitheater. Rome's greatest engineering feat isn't a temple. It's a slaughterhouse. What makes it a marvel isn't the marble on its face. It's the logistics. It's a stadium designed by a legion's logistics master. How do you move 50,000 drunk and bloodthirsty people in and out in under 15 minutes? 80 entrances. Vomitoria, designated corridors and staircases, separating the senators from the plebs. That's crowd control. But the real genius is beneath the arena floor, the hypogeum, a labyrinth of tunnels, elevators, and holding pens. While gladiators fought above, scores of slaves worked in the darkness below, hoisting lions, bears, and entire stage sets up to the sand through trap doors. They could even flood the entire arena with water from the nearby aqueducts, turning it into a lake for mock sea battles. The Colosseum is not architecture. It is a machine, a brutal entertainment machine, designed with the efficiency of a siege camp, and all for one purpose, to keep the mob happy and afraid. Bread and circuses, Roman concrete, opus caementitium. This is the reason our buildings stand and Greek ones fall. The Greeks stacked marble. It's pretty, but it's brittle. We build with a material that is stronger than the stone it came from. The secret is pozzolana, a volcanic ash we find near Naples. When we mix that ash with lime, water, and rubble, it doesn't just dry. It sets off a chemical reaction. Crystals form, locking the material into a single, massive block. It doesn't care about rain. In fact, it loves water. We use it to build the piers of our bridges underwater. It hardens on contact with salt water, actually becoming stronger over time. This is why we can span an arch as vast as the Pantheons. It's why our aqueducts don't leak. It's ugly, so we cover it with marble or brick to please the senators. But we engineers and soldiers know the truth. The marble is the skin, the concrete is the bone, and our bones are stronger than stone. Caesar's Rhine Bridge. This is my favorite marble, because it wasn't built to last. It was built to make a point. Gaius Julius Caesar was hunting German tribes. They kept raiding and then retreating back across the Rhine River, thinking they were safe. The Rhine is wide, deep, and has a hellish current. The Germans thought it was a divine wall. Caesar decided to show them the gods weren't on their side. He could have used boats, but that's what a barbarian would do. Instead, he ordered a bridge built, a one 300-foot timber trestle bridge. His military engineers built it in 10 days. They drove paired, angled piles into the riverbed against the current, 
creating a foundation so strong that the river's own force just locked it tighter. Caesar marched his legions across, burned a few villages, found no army to fight, they had fled in terror. Then he marched back, dismantled the bridge, and went home. The engineering wasn't the bridge. The engineering was the speed. It was a demonstration of power. It was Caesar telling the barbarian world, There is nowhere we cannot go. Your rivers will not stop us. Siege engines. The artillery. Walls give men a false sense of security. Our engineers see walls as a puzzle to be solved. And this is our solution. First, the ballista. Think of it as a giant crossbow. It doesn't use a tensioned string. It uses torsion. Massive bundles of animal sinew or horsehair twisted to the breaking point. It fires a bolt the size of a small spear with pinpoint accuracy. It's not for knocking the wall down. It's for sweeping the defenders off the wall. Then, for the heavy work, we have the onager, the wild donkey's kick. It's a torsion catapult that hurls stones the size of a man's head. It's not accurate, but it doesn't need to be. It hurls boulder after boulder at the same spot on the wall until the stone gives way. And finally, the siege tower, the turris. This is the most arrogant engineering. It's a mobile wooden fortress, covered in wet hides so it won't catch fire, that we roll right up to the enemy wall. It has its own drawbridge at the top. We don't climb your walls. We bring our own wall, taller than yours, and walk down onto you. The marching camp. The castra. This is the marvel the tourists will never see, because we build it from dirt and wood and abandon it the next morning. But it's the most important piece of engineering we have. A legion on the march doesn't stop to rest. We stop to build. It doesn't matter if we're in friendly territory or in the middle of a barbarian swamp. It doesn't matter how exhausted we are. The routine is the same. As soon as we halt, the first cohort stands guard. The rest of us? We grab the sarcina, the shovel, the pickaxe. We dig a perfect square ditch. The earth from that ditch is used to build a rampart on the inside. And on top of that rampart, we plant the sharpened stakes, sudes, we've been carrying all day. Four gates, one on each side. Internal streets laid out in the same grid, always. The general's tent in the center, always. In three hours, we turn an open field into a fortress. The barbarians can attack us in the night. They won't find a bunch of sleeping men. They'll find a wall of earth and wood. A barbarian army sleeps in chaos. A Roman legion sleeps in a fortress of its own making every single night. That is why we survive. Trajan's Column. To the civilian, this is art. To a senator, it's propaganda. To an engineer, it's a logistical nightmare that worked. It's a 100-foot-tall battle report telling the story of how we crushed the Dacians. A stone scroll spiraling upwards telling us exactly how we won. But think about what it took. The column is made of 20 massive drums of Carrara marble. Each one weighs 30 tons. First, we had to quarry these blocks, then transport them hundreds of miles over land and sea to Rome. Then we had to lift them 100 feet into the air in a crowded space. They used a system of cranes powered by giant hamster wheels, manned by slaves, of course. They lifted each block perfectly. And inside, it's hollow. There is a spiral staircase that takes you all the way to the top. The engineering isn't just in the carving on the outside, it's in the empty space on the inside. It is the greatest after-action report ever built. The Cloaca Maxima, the Great Sewer. This is the most important engineering marvel in Rome, and it's the one no poet wants to write about. They love temples and gold. They forget that Rome is built on a swamp. Before we were an empire, we were a village surrounded by waterlogged hills. The Forum was an unusable mud pit. The Cloaca Maxima was our first and greatest victory over nature. It started as an open-air canal, built by our early Etruscan kings, to drain that swamp and turn the mud into solid ground. As the centuries passed, we covered it, expanded it, fed it with runoff from aqueducts. It became the city's digestive system, a tunnel of brick and stone wide enough for a boat to pass through, taking all the filth, waste, and rainwater from the city and dumping it into the Tiber. Without the cloaca, Rome would have died of disease within a hundred years. A million people cannot live together without sanitation. The Colosseum is for entertainment. The aqueduct is for health. But the cloaca? That is for survival. Saturnalia, the great chaos. 
To a civilian, it's the best week of the year. December. Work stops, the courts close, 